She is a mother with three children in New York City. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. So let's start with the big news of the day. A federal appeals court temporarily delaying the city from implementing its vaccine requirement for public school employees. Your reaction? My reaction was initially I had been afraid that come Tuesday we were going to have police charging into classrooms and pulling out unvaccinated teachers while children stood by and sobbed. So now we know that's not going to happen on Tuesday. But as you just said in your report, judges are expected to decide on Wednesday. So it's very likely we just kick the can down the road. We certainly have not solved the problem. Okay, so the nation's largest school system already preparing for the disruption because eventually I think they predict it will come. The union says 90% of, of teachers are vaccinated, but there are still about 6,000 of them who likely won't make the deadline even if it's extended. What is the holdup here? Teachers have been eligible for almost a year for the vaccine. Well, through New York's uh, NYC School Secrets, which is a website that I run, I hear from parents and I hear from teachers. And the main thing that I'm hearing from teachers is it's not that we're anti-vax, but this is the principle of the thing. We want to hold the line because we don't want to set the precedent that down the line we can be told that we must have a vaccination or we must do this or we must do that. The majority of teachers that I'm hearing from are ones who either have already had COVID and they believe they have natural immunity, so they shouldn't have to get the shots. One who claimed that in the past they have had bad reactions to shots and others who say they worked all of last year, especially in community-based centers, which is where the majority of New York City pre-K students are. Most of them are not in public school buildings. Most of them are in community-based centers where the city pays for them to have the students there. And they say, we worked all of last year. We were called essential employees. We had to come in. Nobody was concerned last year that we were teaching without a vaccination. So why are they suddenly concerned with this year? Well, there was, uh, you know, at home learning. They were among the first to be eligible for the vaccine. There are requirements for children to be in school for mumps and chicken pox and measles and and other hepatitis, rubella, other uh, illnesses. So why is this a, a freedom issue as opposed to just a basic public safety, public health measure? for children who are not eligible, many of them to be vaccinated. The words that I'm hearing is hold the line. They're saying we need to hold the line because if we give in on this, then we're saying we'll give on, on a, in, in on a host of other things down the road. That's what I'm hearing from most of the teachers who I'm in touch with, who are saying that they don't want to get the vaccine, but they do want to continue to keep working. All right. Well, Alina Adams, I'm sure we will uh, both be keeping tabs on this story as it unfolds. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.